Hello and welcome back for this second tutorial on the low space rhythmic multi delay. And today we will discover the rhythmic part of the device. First of all, here is a simple drum loop we will enhance with the space. Now let's add the device, reset it to start from scratch, and quickly mute all echo lines but one. Let's solo the snare drum to get a better understanding of what we are doing. If we set the delay unit to 1 16th, since our delay length is 16 steps, the echo duration is precisely one bar. Our echo sounds at the same time as our direct signal. We can offset in time this echo while keeping the repeat duration to one bar by activating a pre-delay tap. Notice how the snare echo now hits almost half a bar behind the direct signal. In fact, it sounds precisely 6 16th notes behind as we have activated the tap at step 7. This may sound confusing, but think of it this way. The direct sound arrives at step 1, without any delay, while the first echo arrives at step 7, 6 delay units after. When no pre-delay taps are activated, the first echo hits after the duration of the delay, which, in our case, is one bar. And if this still sounds confusing, you've already been working like this with some other reason device, like, well, the redrum sequencer. Yes, the space tap sequencer works exactly the same as the redrum sequencer, the delay length being the analog of redrum's step count, and the taps replacing the various hits. Let's add some more taps. Once a tap is activated, clicking a second time on the activation button fades down the tap by 12 dBs. Clicking a third time deactivates it. Ok, let's take some time programming a double rhythmic effect with a second echo line. And now a third, but this time with a shorter delay length, which will give us a shorter loop. Let's hear this on all drum channels. One last thing we can do to enhance this rhythmic effect is to try to isolate different parts of the drum loop so each drum part gets treated in a different echo line. One quick way to do this would be to use the various left and right input channels of each echo line and pan the instruments differently on redrum. Another way is to isolate the drum parts using their spectrum. The kick for instance is pretty much all low frequencies while the hi-hat contains a lot of high frequencies. First of all, let's solo the snare drum again. The space echo lines all have a bandpass filter inside their feedback loops to control the overall tone of their echoes. A global bandwidth control lets you adjust the width of this bandpass filter 
while the tone control changes the center frequency. You can offset this center frequency for each echo line using the tone adjustment knobs at the bottom left. Well that's it for this tutorial, so have fun playing around with taps!